everyone, it's Camille Walker with My Mommy Style, and I'm so excited to be with you guys today because I'm sharing six instant pot meals that you can do anytime when it's one of those days that you're like, crap, it is 4.30, what am I going to make for dinner? And you have to be ready with dinner because dinner is every single day, right? So for those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, as way of introduction, my name is Camille. I blog at mymommystyle.com and I blog with my cousin Melissa who lives in Alaska. I am in Utah. I am a mother of four and my cousin Melissa is a mother of three and expecting her fourth baby this next month, which is so exciting. And one of our favorite things is to share fun recipes with you that are healthy and good for your families and that are foods that your kids will actually eat. And I didn't pull out my lighting and I feel like my eyes are kind of like shadowed. It's kind of a foggy day today. So tell me what your weather is like. I think I might grab another light. Does, are my eyes too shadowed? I don't know. So pop in, tell me where you're watching from because today we're all going to be talk, we're going to be talking about the Instant Pot, which is similar to a pressure cooker. It is a pressure cooker and it helps you so that you can prepare meals like you would in a crock pot, but just much, much more quickly. So thinking of like, okay, it's 4.35 o'clock and still have a meal on the table by six o'clock that's delicious and amazing. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you six recipes that are five ingredients or less. And also you can find that link to the blog posts in the description here as well as 15 other Instant Pot recipes that are a little bit more involved, so you can pick which one looks best for you. But if you're just tuning in, please say hi, and I would love it if you see that button that says subscribe to My Mommy Style, go ahead and click that. And if you share this to your wall, you can have it saved on your timeline so that you don't have to worry about um, finding these recipes later. You can just have it saved right to your wall. So like my mommy style on Facebook, share this to your wall, and then we can get started. But first, I need some people to pop in and say, hi, where are you watching from? Hi, tell me where you're watching from. And I'm sorry, the lighting, I thought it's light enough, I don't need to lighten it up, but I feel like it's kind of dark today. What do we think? Okay, so I'm going to show you these ingredients that we're going to be making. This is the basic of what we're working with. And I'm gonna go grab, uh, I'm gonna go grab a just a little lamp to help with our lighting, just a little bit to see what we're working with. So, and someone say hi, because I'm trying to make sure that I can see your comments. Swipe left to reveal comments. Hi, look at all you coming in here. Okay, so every day, you guys, I am like. This whole cooking, oh, there's Crystal. Hi, thanks for saying hi, I can actually see you. Hi, Brianna. Yay, I love when you guys comment because that makes live so much more fun. Hi, Missy. Tell me where you're watching from. What is the weather like? Have you purchased an Instant Pot? Do you know what it is? Hi, Tim, how are you? So for me, I don't have a ton of time to cook in the kitchen every single day. So the Instant Pot has been a lifesaver. If that's a little shot of what it looks like and I'm gonna show you two recipes like step-by-step step today but I'm gonna go through the ingredient list of some others so Crystal's watching from North Carolina Brianna's watching from Utah hey Utah that's where I am too where else are we watching from today we have the weather is a little bit cloudy and it's starting to cool down and I'm actually really excited about that so I do these Facebook Live videos every Thursday, this time that you're watching, 1.30 Mountain Standard Time. I share lifestyle tips, recipes, different things like that. If you share parenting tips, thing, anything that has to do with parenting, mom life, things like that, if you share this to your wall, that lets Facebook know that you like this and you will see more videos like this from me. And on Monday nights, I do cooking with Shane every week where we do recipes too. So subscribe to my mommy style and like it so that you can make sure to see all of the content that I prepare for you guys. All right. So it looks like Michelle says Tennessee. Missy, I'm in Georgia. I have a power pressure cooker. Love mine. Use it all the time and always looking for more ideas. Awesome. And as I'm showing these ideas, I would love it if you popped in your ideas too in the comments because then we can all just grab a notebook and take notes of what other people are saying. I do have a link to 
the recipe on this description, but if you share this to your wall, you should be able to watch this and save it for whenever you need it. Hi, Carol from Wisconsin. Tim says, watching from Palm Springs, South Carolina, or South California, and weather is hot. Ugh. Come to Utah. <laughs> it's, it's half here in the UK. Hey, Hannah, half eight. Tell me what that means. That must be a European way of saying things. This is my first time watching you from the Philippines. What are you cooking? Hi, Cher. Okay, so I will get into that. I'm going to say hi really quick to a couple more people, and then I will tell you. Hi, Lori. Hi, Vanessa from Texas. Amy from North Carolina. Okay, perfect. Hi, Noelle. I know who you are. <laughs> so fun to make new friends and see old friends too. So I'm going to start with two that I have already started prepping in the kitchen. So Rosie said this is a first time from California. Hi, Brian from, well, you didn't say where you're from, but hi. And Hannah says it's 8.30. It, oh, you're saying what time it was. Okay, so it's later at night. Hi, Tracy. I am doing well. My boys are napping. I have two. My kids are ages nine, six, three, and one. And when I do these live shows, I put them down for a nap. And I'm always like crossing my fingers like, please stay asleep so I can do this. <laughs> because you just never know, right, with kids. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you is actually a prep. So I have some chicken that I've already been cooking. And I'm going to show you first how to make cilantro lime or excuse me, honey lime chicken enchiladas. That's gonna be our first one. The next one I'm gonna show you is chicken cordon bleu. The next one I'm going to be showing you is, the other ones I will tell you about because I'm not gonna show you all of them like physically, but I'm also going to be sharing with you basil chicken, salsa chicken for tacos, and barbecue chicken for a barbecue chicken salad. So those are the ones that we're going to be reviewing today. Hi Barbara, how are you? Watching from the first time from Indiana. Hi Amber, thanks for tuning in. And for all of the, those of you who are just tuning in now, please like My Mommy Style and share this to your wall so that Facebook knows that you'll want to see more of this and you can see it later. And Brian is from West Palm Beach. Oh, how beautiful. That's so exciting. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started and I've been touching my face and my hair. So I'm going to wash up really quick. Hi, Mimi. I'm going to wash my hands and then we're going to get started. And I think you guys are going to love this because so many people have bought these Instant Pots and then thought, okay, but how do I use it, right? It's pretty intimidating. I'm gonna go over the basics with you and then we can just go into the recipes from there. So Tracy from South Africa, Carrie from Columbus, Ohio, and West Virginia, so cool. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands. I'm gonna go over the basics of the Instant Pot really quick because I'm assuming some of you may know, some of you may not know. If you have an Instant Pot, please show me a heart Put a heart so I know how many have it. If you've never used it, use this face. Oh, or you're just hearing about it for the first time because I wanna know kind of who's watching and what your experiences are. So I'm gonna wash up really quick. Okay, so a lot of first time users, awesome. Okay, in real life, you guys, can I show you what happened in my kitchen? Did you happen to see you were in Utah, my home state? Yes, Carrie, that's why I am. Amy from Northwestern Minnesota. Okay, a lot of newbies with Instant Pot. Good, okay, well, I'll go over everything that you need to know, but look what happened, you guys. Do you see that mess on the floor? See that? Oh. Yeah. That's what my baby did right before I did this video. Such a mess, oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm gonna set you guys up, so I'm gonna show you the tools here, and I just popped it out. So I was doing a live video Monday, and, okay, so, so case in point, I was doing a live video, and I dropped my phone in the pot. You just never know what's gonna happen live. Hi, Tim, I'm gonna help teach you how to cook. Using the Instant Pot is a great way to learn how to cook, and really wow people in your house and family, and it's not too hard. So I'm gonna help you do that. Hi, Matt from Florida. Okay, so I'm gonna, I miss some of your comments. Amy doesn't have one, but she wants one. Okay, so Instant Pot, let's go over the basics first, because I was super intimidated, like didn't know what I was doing, and so I thought I should share this, because I bet there are a lot of people who feel like I do, 
and don't really know all the ins and outs. Okay, so here is the Instant Pot. And let me, you know what, I'm just gonna lower this so you can see it a little bit better. How's that? Is that okay? Okay, so here is my Instant Pot. And the first thing that you want to know about learning to use the Instant Pot is that when you're setting it up the very first time, there is an arrow situation here where you have to set the lid on straight, where you connect the arrows and then twist the lid on. I did not know that. <laughs> so the first time when I was trying to put the lid on, I'm like, gosh, it just slips around. Like, what's the problem? It's because you have to match up these arrows and then lock it so that it can be in the right position for pressure. Now, if you are cooking this in your kitchen, a good idea is to put it in a place where you are far away from little fingers that touch. Darlene, this is the Instant Pot. There's a link to it where you can buy it directly from Amazon in the description. So if you wanna go ahead and just follow that link, you can see exactly what I'm working with. So this, um, these arrows help you to pressurize it correctly. But if you are cooking with this, it gets very, very hot. So you wanna make sure to put it somewhere out from under the cupboard so the steam doesn't like ruin your cupboards. You also may wanna consider putting it in a place where the kids can't touch it or just like teach them, do not touch this, it gets really hot. So I've been cooking with this and I have prepped some, some chicken. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that. Donnell says, the Instant Pot has been a life changer for me. I can now cook dinners during the week after work, whereas before it did not happen often. Amazing appliance and by far my favorite now. Awesome, I would love to hear what you're cooking. So tell me all about it. Because for me, I've had this Instant Pot now for maybe a couple of months and I'm sharing with you the weeknight meals that I have done, six of my very favorite that are so easy, like five ingredients or less. And so far, I've used the high pressure option as well as the saute option, but you can also like cook yogurt and um, lentils and beans and a whole bunch of different things and there's buttons that are specifically for those settings. So you'll just wanna look and see what you want to do it for. Does leaving the chicken in there or keep warm for 43 minutes make it tough or dried out? Okay, so for me, I'm going to show you first. I'm going to let this air out because it, I've been cooking in there. And it might be a little loud, so I'm gonna put this rag on top of it. This is like a bleached rag. <laughs> so I'm gonna vent it out because there's a little vent button here. So here on the top, it's venting or sealing. So when you're cooking, you want it on the ceiling. And then after it's cooked, you want to vent it out. So I'm going to vent it, but I'm first going to put this over so it doesn't make too much of a sound. It looks like I've already, oh, it's already vented out, okay. So I can show you how I'm gonna open it now because once it's sealed, it will, that red button that was on the top there will push down so you know that it's sealed. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Hi, hi patchouli. Patchouli the Puggle, oh, I have a Puggle named Poppy. Where is he? We have a Puggle too, that's so cool. Is he by my feet? All the time my dog is by my feet and they'll be like, oh, what a cute dog and I don't even notice that he was there like in the shop. So, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take this lid off so you can see what's going on and then I'll show you the meals that we're going to prep with this chicken. Now the magic number for me with prepping frozen chicken, which is typically what I'm working with on a weeknight where I'm like, oh, I forgot to thaw the meat. Let's work with frozen chicken, like, right? Who's that? If that's you, like, give me a raised hand or a heart or something because I feel like so often that's what I'm working with. I have frozen chicken, I need to get the dinner on the table, and so that's what this is about. So, yeah, I'm starting to see some likes and hearts come through. Yes, that's where we all are, like, what's for dinner, right? So, with this, the magic number for me has been 26 minutes on high, okay? So, if you're working with um, if you're working with frozen chicken, for me, three chicken breasts, but I'm using like big chicken breasts, medium to big, because I shop a lot of times from Costco for my chicken. So that's enough that it feeds my whole family of six, typically. So yeah, Karen's like, so my life, right? So 26 minutes has been the magical number for me with the Instant Pot, 26 minutes at high. And so when you're doing that, I'm gonna just show you on the machine really quick. Okay, so here are the buttons. Boop. 
Okay, so when you're setting it, you're going to go ahead and put, so here's the pressure and the mode is over here on high, and then you're gonna set it for the 26 minutes. So when I get to my next recipe, I'll show you when I'm doing that, but right now I'm gonna open this up so that we can get into our first recipe, which is the honey lime chicken enchiladas, and this one is so good. So did you hear that? It kind of makes like a cute little sound. Okay, so it's gonna be steamy. Hi, lots of steam, so be careful when you're removing this. And the chicken is going to look a lot like when you prep your chicken in the crock pot. It's not very pretty, but we can fix that because we're gonna rinse it and get rid of like the white creamy chicken gut look, you know? So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It's not gonna be pretty, but this is just what it looks like. So if I am prepping um, chicken ahead of time, whether I'm doing meal prepping, shredding chicken, any of those things, I will always just stick it in the Instant Pot for 26 minutes with a can of chicken broth. That's it, that's it. So this is just 14 and a half ounces. And I'm going to be seasoning this and actually marinating this chicken so it's going to take on a different flavor. But this is a great way to prep a lot of chicken so that if you're prepping for the week, you have it prepared and ready ahead of time. So if you're just tuning in with us now, please share this to your wall so you can see all of the things that you missed and subscribe and like my mommy style so you can see more of these recipes. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this shot of what the chicken looks like and it's, it's not pretty, but we're gonna make it pretty, okay? Okay, so there's the chicken. Anytime that you cook in the pressure cooker, rather than that like white chicken stuff being like floating around, a lot of times it's sitting right on top of the chicken. So I like to rinse it off and like prep the chicken so it doesn't have any of the stuff on it. If you cook more than three frozen breasts, would you extend cooking time? I don't think so, but I'm still, this is, a real, this is the larger size pot. I think the 26 minutes would still do it. I have to experiment with that. So these are, I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out and I'm gonna rinse them up real quick. Grab a bowl. Lime chicken enchilada recipe does have a couple of steps in it, but you don't necessarily have to do it exactly the way the recipe calls for because this recipe does have a marinating step in it, but that's not necessary. You don't have to marinate it if you don't want to. So right now I'm just pulling out this chicken and let's see if you want to get it. This is what it looks like. So it kind of looks gross, but we're going to fix that. So I'm just pulling out all the chicken right now, and then I'm gonna rinse it with water, and then I'm gonna start shredding it before I create the marinade. But this is something that while I was cooking the chicken, you can create the marinade. I didn't do that today because I wanted to show you what the marinade looks like. Hey Rick, how are you? I hope your family's okay. Tell me about all of the prep for the, the storm. That was crazy, and your daughter. Beth, we have a family of six too, so you recommend the larger Instant Pot. I, well, yes. I can tell you that family friends of mine have bought two Instant Pots even, where they'll prep the meat or main course in one and even do side dishes in the other. Right now, I only have one Instant Pot, but I can see after using it and getting really familiar with it why you might want to have another. But the smaller size holds quite a bit too. So. I think having the option to be able to use more space is nice, but you don't necessarily have to have that. I think you can make the smaller size work for you. Rick says, we are well, not too much hurricane damage. I am so glad to hear that, that they reduced the risk of, of everything, that it's the low, it, they lowered the hurricane level. That's amazing. So glad you're safe. So glad. Okay, so here's the chicken. I'm gonna rinse it off and make it look pretty. So you guys can come over to the window with me. That's kind of what it looks like.
rinsing off all of the white kind of chicken stuff that comes out when you cook it. chicken. Yeah, and you can follow the, um, the link. There's an Amazon affiliate link, and that actually helps to support me too if you order it through that link. So if you feel so inclined and you have Amazon Prime, Amazon is, is awesome. I'm like all about the Amazon. Okay, so I have this chicken here. I'm going to go ahead and shred it um, so you can kind of see and this, honestly, I just washed my hands, so I'm just going to shred it really quick with my hands. It is hot, but woo, maybe it's too hot for my hands. <laughs> yes, Tracy, the hurricane news was so, so sad. And all of our friends in Texas, I hope you are all safe. If you are meal prepping and wanting to use this chicken for salads, it is an awesome way. Chicken, I love using chicken broth because it just helps season the chicken a little bit, but you can modify it however you want to. So you could easily take this shredded chicken and modify it for a number of different meals if you want to. Oh, thank you. Okay. So this shredded chicken I'm going to be using for a honey, lime, enchilada recipe. And this is just three chicken breasts and it is a ton of meat. So I think this is enough that I could even make one for now and then like freeze it for later. You can use an electric hand mixer to shred your chicken. Oh, I need that. I probably should get one, huh? That's on my list. There are so many kitchen gadgets that I could really use, that being one of them. I have a hand mixer. That's actually one thing I do have, but I don't have a standing mixer, which I think would be even nicer. Okay. So that chicken is prepped and ready. Now I'm gonna show you the marinade. Place chicken in a standing mixer with a paddle attachment, best when it's hot, shreds in two seconds. Oh, I would love that. I wish I had a standing mixer. Okay, I'm going to wash up my hands again. Hold on. recipe this is one of my husband's very favorite and I just came up with it this week so he is a fan when I told him I was gonna make this again he was like yes so for purposes of showing you typically I would just put it you know what maybe I will I typically just put it right into a bag because it is a marinating situation so I'm gonna grab a big bag to put this all in and then we're going to make the marinade okay So this is just a gallon sized bag and I'm going to show you what we're going to be putting in it for the marinade and then we'll set this aside then we'll get into the chicken cordon bleu recipe. Hi Robin! Hmm, I've never heard of that. How do they work? So an instant pot is very, very similar to a pressure cooker. It is a pressure cooker essentially and it's like a crock pot but because it's a pressure cooker it cooks it so much more quickly. So typically I can set it for 26 minutes and be set and done for the night which is amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this. This is for the honey lime chicken enchiladas, and we're going to, going to make a marinade. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is grab honey and put three tablespoons into your bag. And I have done this enough. I'm just going to eyeball it. So 
but I do like to stop between each one. So there's one. I'm gonna do that two more times. Put your hair up, geez. It's okay. I had my hair up before, but I'm just in a hurry. Okay, so that's three tablespoons. Hi, Catherine, how are you? Oh, thanks, Crystal. Okay, so we have our three tablespoons of honey. All right, and then next we are going to add two and a half tablespoons of lime juice. So if you have fresh limes, awesome. If you don't, just go ahead and use lime juice out of a bottle. I bought this today, so I might need to open up the, oh no, we're good. Okay, so two and a half tablespoons again. Okay, next up is a half tablespoon of chili powder. reduces the need to have to wash another bowl so you don't have to do that but okay and then also we're going to be doing garlic powder and that's going to be a half teaspoon or or you could do a little bit more than that I'm not even gonna measure it because I'm pretty good at eyeballing I love garlic powder. And then I'm also going to be adding a can of green chilies to this. Okay, so now that the marinade is all put together, I'm gonna go ahead and add this chicken into the bag and then we'll let it marinate. It's a good idea to let it marinate for about four hours, but like I said before, if you don't have time, like it's not the end of the world, right? You could just mix it all together and then just do the rest of the prep as you go. So after you have this marinating, you'll just go ahead and prep it like you would regular enchiladas have your tortillas cooked up, put in some cheese and this mix. And then on the top, you're going to pour enchilada sauce and cheese and cook it for about 20 to 25 minutes. I'm gonna mix it all around, so, so easy. And again, you guys, this, this recipe is so, so good. dinner that's ready so so fast on says th looks yummy thanks for sharing oh you're so welcome yeah this is so quick and easy so this is cilantro lime uh honey enchiladas <laughs> i'm going to put that in the fridge so it can marinate and just be ready for later or you could simply freeze this and just have it be ready for later too so the next thing we're going to talk about is the chicken cordon bleu recipe and i need to rinse out this pot and kind of start over fresh so I'm going to put this into the fridge and then we'll get started on that next recipe. This is a little bit hot, but I'm just going to rinse it out.
So we're starting over fresh. This is, I'm gonna show you all the steps of the Instant Pot if you're brand new to it, where I'm gonna do it again. Thank you for sharing. Oh, you guys are so sweet. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you, I love you. Okay, let's play nice here. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on. You're probably talking about hair, right? Um, Josie, that looks so good. Quick and easy, something for kids. It would even eat. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, and I always like to spray the inside of the pot just so that it's, you know, not gonna get stuck to anything. And this is the chicken cordon bleu. So for those of you who are just tuning in, I do have links to these recipes in the description at mymommystyle.com. If you want to, if you missed the first part of this, you can share it to your wall and you can make sure to see the rest of it. And then let's see if, do we have someone that I need to block? I'm sorry. Looks like I need to block someone maybe, because I can block them. <laughs> Ooh, isn't it fun? There's so much negativity in the world, you guys. Let's just, thank you for just being kind and just being happy and nice. I really appreciate that. Okay, let me grab, I need cream of chicken soup and I need to grab it from my pantry. So let me grab that. Okay, so everyone has this in their pantry, super easy. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I'm putting into the pot as I assemble it so you can see exactly what's going on. So let me raise this up, maybe. Here we go. Okay. Is that a good angle? Oh look, see, there's my dog. <laughs> okay, so this is chicken cordon bleu. version so easy in and out so the first thing we're going to start with is a can of cream of chicken soup we're just going to scoop it right into the into the instant pot here now I did spray the pot before I started just to make sure so it doesn't help stick my daughter helped me make this the other day and she thought this was like the grossest, that cream of chicken was like the grossest thing ever. And I said, it's fine, it's gonna taste really good. But kids are funny, like they just get so scared about things. Okay, oh you're so welcome Amy, thank you for saying so. Okay, so we have a can of the cream of chicken soup. I did grab the 98% fat free, I mean that is an option up to you. Oh, hi, Sherry. I'm so glad you found me. Please like my mommy style page so you can see more. Okay, so I'm going to add about a fourth a cup of milk here. And we have a little baby in the house, so we have vitamin D. But you can use whatever you want. You're just going to stir that up here in the bottom. Oh, thanks. He's a puggle. His name is Poppy. He's the sweetest little thing. Okay, so make sure that's stirred up nice and well. I'll get you a little bit closer so you can see. Okay, so who else buys these monster bags of frozen chicken? I'm gonna grab three chicken breasts. Okay, so you're going to place them here just at the bottom of your pan. And you probably could layer the chicken on top of each other. I've never done that. Um, but I think, I think you could. Again, I've only been using this Instant Pot for a couple of months. Okay, so we have our three chicken breasts just layered there at the bottom. I'm going to wash up again. Oh, thanks, Tracy.
you're gonna love this because it seriously is so easy. You don't have to worry about rolling the chicken with the meat and the cheese. What you're going to do, hi Rick. <laughs> I love that you guys are saying hi to each other, that's awesome. So I just have sliced ham here and I'm going to put two slices of ham on top of each chicken breast that's frozen. So this is frozen chicken breast. Imagine it's 4.30 and you're trying to get dinner done and on the table by six o'clock. Now one thing to keep in mind when you are cooking with an instant pot is it does take time for the pot to pressurize. It can be, I don't know, I think maybe 10 minutes or so. So I would add that to your cooking time. Just keep that in mind because it does take time to get that done. Okay, so that's just going right on top of the frozen chicken breast. I am from Utah. Where are you from, Caitlin? He's so cute, I wanna kiss his face. <laughs> a little biased since I have two puggles and a lab. Oh, Willow, that is so cool. Yeah, he, we've had him for about 10 years and he's just the sweetest dog. And that mess that's on the floor is what my baby did right before I put him down for a nap. So, sorry about the mess. Real life, real mom life. Okay, so this is Swiss, Swiss cheese. Caitlin from Florida. I was curious about the accent. Oh, that's funny that I have an accent. I don't even know. Okay, so we're just putting a slice of Swiss cheese on top of this ham, okay? It's easy as that. And then we are going to add some stuffing right onto the top of this meat mixture, okay? So just a box of stuffing. I just bought like the cheapest one. Ham can, how funny. Sherry from College Station, Texas. Nice, okay. Ooh. Good thing it wasn't open. You know what, I don't even use the whole bag, like half is plenty, in my opinion. You can add the whole thing if you want to, depending on how much you want to eat the stuffing, but I would just add half of this stove top. This is chicken cordon bleu in an Instant Pot. So on top of this, I'm actually going to be adding little cubes of butter, just about a fourth of a cube, just sliced up small. So just let me grab that. This will help absorb the stuffing and make it so that you have a nice buttery taste in there. This is just about a fourth of a cube. Just a little piece of paper. Oh good, Amy says she's gonna make it tonight. This is gonna be good, says Barbara. Thanks guys, you're so sweet. So to help with the moisture on top of the Instant Pot, there will be a lot of moisture that builds up in the pressure cooker anyway, but I just like to put a little bit of a splash of milk on the top, and that is plenty. Okay, so that is all the steps for the Instant Pot, but I'm gonna show you how to set it. So for you that are trying this for the first time and you're like, what do I do? I'm gonna show you how you do it. So I'm gonna take you down here. Yep, it's been decided I need an Instant Pot. This mom of three is too busy and always on the go. This would save me so much time and money. Let's face it, extra pounds from eating out, yes. 
That's so true. Oh, it gets so busy. Yay, Josie, I'm glad you're going to try it. It is 2.15 here, so it's just in the early afternoon. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to go ahead and set this now that it's all set and ready. Oh, thank you, Rick. Thank you for the love, you guys. It means so much. Okay, so the top of this lid here, you wanna pay attention, boop. Okay, right there. It's either venting or it's steaming. So, or sealing, sorry, sealing or venting. So when you're starting your recipe, you wanna make sure that it's on the sealing side because then when you're done with your recipe, you'll vent it before you open it. Does that make sense? And this little button here will let you know when it seals because it goes down. So Catherine wants to know how often am I doing these videos? So I do these videos, um, Mondays I always share food recipes at six o'clock Mountain Standard Time. And then Thursdays I share lifestyle tips for moms. So it could be recipes or parenting tips or um, family travel tips or ways to save money, stuff like that. So. If you subscribe to the channel, you can see it. And also like My Mommy Style on Facebook so you can make sure not to miss it. Denise said, I don't have a pressure cooker. Can you do this in a crock pot? And if so, how long does it have to cook? Yes, you can do this in a crock pot. It would be about four, four hours, I think would be a good, a good one for that. Great details. I've never used it in a spot. Going to get one soon. Good. Donnell says, when it seals, the button goes up, and when the pressure completely out, the button drops. Thank you, Donnell. I was like, I can't remember if it's up or down. Okay, so this is an, a trick that I took a minute to figure out. See that, see that arrow right there? It says um, open and closed. You have to match that arrow up with the piece on the cooker so that you can seal it correctly. Otherwise, if you try to put the lid on, it just like, wobbles around, which does no one any good. So let me go ahead and show you how this works. Okay, so I have it on the ceiling side and I'm going to line up the arrows. Okay, now listen, do you hear that? I'll do that again so you can hear it. Oop. Okay, did we hear that? Give it a, a like if you heard it. And then we're going to turn it so it clicks, yes. And then I'm going to set it. So it's on pressure and I'm going to do manual. Okay, let's see. Hold on, I'm gonna make sure it's starting over here because I was cooking something in it before. So I'm going manual. That's why I needed to cancel it. I'm like, why isn't this working? Okay, so I'm going manual and I'm on high pressure and see I already have it set at 26 because that is what I like for the frozen um, chicken and then it already goes ahead and starts I don't have to press start over that I just have it set at manual 26 minutes and it will go ahead and start so right now it's starting to pressurize and you will hear the little button pop so that you know that's when the cooking actually begins Karen says what are you going to serve with as sides so with this we like to eat um, salad or one of my favorites for my kids I'll show you I will show you if you have picky eaters like me one of our favorite things we love the English cucumber so I call them cucumber chips for my kids just because it makes it sound more fun and I slice them up really really little and I put that on the side as cucumber chips. My husband and I like to eat salad on the side. Sometimes my kids will go for salad and sometimes they won't. So I find that if I offer two vegetable options, typically one of them is going to work. So a lot of times for our family, it's steamed broccoli and an English cucumber, sliced small or cucumber chips is what we call them. So if you hit cancel, you can do manual, shouldn't have to unplug. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I just didn't realize like it was still um, keeping track of the last meal I had done. So I'd never had to deal with that. Thanks, Donnell. Karen says, yes, ma'am, thank you. Awesome, so yeah, this is what I like to serve my kids. So as this is cooking, if you guys wanna hang around and see what it looks like when it's done, I'm gonna show you a few other recipe ideas that are super easy and quick. I'm not going to like 
put them in the Instant Pot because this is already cooking and I only have the one. But I'm gonna show you recipes that have been an awesome, awesome option for us as a family. So another recipe that I love is just basil chicken. So this is basil pesto. You can get this from Costco. So I'll hold that up close in case you wanna do a screenshot. This stuff is money, like it is so good. So again, I will just layer the chicken at the bottom, make sure you have it sprayed, and I will do two big scoops of this basil pesto on top of each chicken breast, and I will also put a piece of cheese, usually provolone, or if you don't have provolone in the house and you're like me and you have a lot of little kids, you can slice up string cheese, and it's the same thing. So you could put sliced string cheese on top and then a sliced tomato. Sometimes I like to save the tomato for after it's cooked, just so it's fresher. It depends on if you like a cooked tomato or a fresh tomato on top. But this is so easy and seriously so good. So this is one of my favorite go-tos, like it's 4.30, oh my gosh, what am I gonna cook for dinner? I have also used this in the oven and I have used it on the grill outside. So it's very versatile with ways that you can use it. Pesto, 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 so good. Hello, I bought one and I haven't used it yet. Yeah, you need to share this to your wall so you can watch it from the beginning because I thought I better figure this out so I can like share it with people. R oh yeah, Rick says, yummy basil. Hi Paloma, how are you? I know I missed so many comments, I'm so sorry. A great belated birthday present for me in case anyone wants to get me a late gift. <laughs> it is a good gift. I know that would be a really good gift. Okay, I think I got most of the comments there. That basil pesto is so good on pasta too. Ooh, I haven't tried that. That does sound good. Okay, so another really good option that I love for cooking in a pressure cooker or a slow cooker, if you are watching and you don't have an Instant Pot, is to use a bottle of barbecue sauce. I'll just use frozen chicken barbecue sauce. If you did have a slow cooker, you could have it ready and out the door in 30 minutes. But if you don't, you could use this in a slow cooker, slow cooker too. I feel like I'm speaking way too fast. So I will slice up a red onion and I will put a bottle of barbecue sauce in it and I will use it for barbecue chicken salad, barbecue chicken pizza, or barbecue chicken with a vegetable on the side. Such an easy dinner and so good. And I feel like my kids will use this a lot too, especially if we're doing like, um, a pulled chicken sandwich where you can shred it and just have it ready to go. Basil chicken with pasta would be so good. I would love to watch the end, but I'm off to bed. Thanks for sharing your great. Oh, thanks, Tracy. If you share it to your wall, you can watch what you missed. And thank you for the support. Where in Costco do you find the pesto? This is the second time in a couple weeks that someone mentioned it. It's in the refrigerated section for us, like kind of back by um, where they have the pastas and like if you buy tortellini with the cheese inside or um, things like that. <laughs> Anyone else want to chime in and say where it is? It's kind of by the refrigerated section because it's you have to keep it in the refrigerator. Donnell says, as soon as your item is done cooking and pressure has been released, it automatically will stay on warm. Sometimes this can burn some meals on the bottom like pasta dishes. I hit cancel right away for those. Oh, that's smart. Donnell, thank you. I'm still new to it, so that's a good tip. Okay, so barbecue chicken, you, you can use it in so many different ways. Another recipe that I love is salsa chicken. I will just simply dump a can of salsa in with chicken and I will use that for tacos or enchiladas or a taco salad. And that's a really easy way to come up with a, a really quick um, dinner. Another thing that you can do if your kids don't love enchiladas or things mixed, Sometimes I will do a cheese quesadilla for them and I'll use little bits of the salsa chicken in the cheese quesadilla so it's kind of like hidden and not so scary looking and that way they're getting their chicken in and it's not scaring anyone. Thank you for so much for this. I'm about to change up my eating habits and came across your video so love them. Oh, thank you Tris. Is it Tris or Tris? I think Tris. I'm so glad you love it. Jenny says, just came across your page. Always need new recipes, thanks. Thank you, and if you could like the page, that helps me out a ton. Like the page and share it to your wall so you can come back to it. Thank you, Jenny. Sarah says, thanks, wasn't sure if it was a, a pantry thing. Yeah, it's refrigerated, so head to the back. Perfect. Chicken, can of Rotel tomatoes, teaspoon of cumin, makes yummy tacos. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, you guys start sharing the ones that you've tried that you love. 
Okay, let me make sure that I covered them all because I wanted to do six. So we have the pesto chicken, barbecue chicken salad is one that I love, or you can do it on pizza or with um, shredded up to have sandwiches. Hi from Door County, Wisconsin. Hi Deb, how are you? Chicken cordon bleu, that's the one that we have cooking right now. And if you missed any of these recipes, you can go to the link and get the description and the ingredients for the recipe. Um, taco salad, we talked about, oh, I haven't talked about taco salad. I'm like, we talked about that. No, we didn't. Okay, so something that's really cool about the Instant Pot that I didn't realize when I bought it is that you can use it as a slow cooker setting. You can use it as a pressure cooker setting. You can use it for a saute setting. So when I made um, the taco tacos with ground meat, you can actually pressure cook it first and then you turn it to saute mode. So if you added like a pound of frozen beef, you could thaw it out and start to cook it, but then halfway through your cooking process, you can actually take the lid off and go into saute mode, which is something that I was like, oh, that's awesome. So you can just add the seasoning right in there and you're good to go. So that's another setting. A lot of people I know or have heard of that like to make their own yogurt. I haven't personally done that. I would love to hear if you have that I haven't done that yet. Do you do healthy juices too? I do like to make smoothies in the morning. If you want my smoothie recipes, you can go to mymommystyle.com and check out some of those. I haven't made any juices in the pressure cooker, but that would be really cool. I didn't know people even did that, so that's awesome. Can you do the pesto chicken in the crock pot? Yes, yes you can. I would say four to six hours probably would be the best for that, depending on how many chicken breasts you have. I have a regular pressure cooker. Do you know how many pounds of pressure an Instant Pot provides? Is it adjustable? Oh, oh no, I need like, who was I, who was telling us all the major tips? I'm not sure. I'm sure you could probably look it up. Donnell, please tell us. I think Donnell has the most experience that I've heard from so far. Um, I'm not sure. I don't even know. I'm sorry. Deb, good and love you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Deb. You're so sweet. Okay, we will do after this and I liked your Facebook page. Thank you so much. That really is so, so kind. So, okay, taco salad. Of course, you can use the tacos for a taco or to make it into salad for later. My husband and I have done keto, the keto diet, which is getting moderate protein, high fat, lots of fruits and lots of vegetables and low sugar. And if you've heard about the keto diet, um, I've actually shared keto recipes on the blog that you can check out if you want to. So uh, th these meals cater a lot to healthy proteins, vegetables, so if you're looking to do that, then go check out the blog for those recipes too. Louise says, hello from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Hi, Louise. That's actually my middle name. I'd love to come to Canada. Donnell said, I made the cold start yogurt for the first time this past weekend, and the kids like it way better than the store-bought. I make parfaits for them with fruit and granola. Ooh, I want to hear what recipe you used. I like your personality. You are so kind and sweet. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. She says, sorry, I don't know about the pressure. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't know about that. Hi, Miss Donnell. Let's see. You are the cutest. Can't wait to try these. I've had an Instant Pot since Christmas and haven't used it nearly enough. That was me too. So I really hope you like these recipes. You can go to the blog, of course, to see exactly the descriptions. In fact, this was one of those things that I thought, there are other Instant Pot recipes that are more involved and a lot more complicated. This one is these are more simple, but they are all so delicious. So I hope you like them. Domenica, hi, hello from upstate New York. Are you by Poughkeepsie or what? Tell me what city, because I actually kind of know that area. Okay, so those are the main recipes that I planned for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in today and all of you guys coming in defense of me and my hair and hand washing and all of those things. I'm just a mom in my kitchen doing the best I can. And I love sharing with you guys. Seriously, your love and comments mean so much to me. If you wanna tune in with me more, please like My Mommy Style on Facebook. And you can also share this to, all, so you, to your wall so you can go and fast forward through and get what you need. And I'll check in with you guys later. Thanks for the love. See you guys.